Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Apex Investor, the channel where we look at the best investing opportunities in the stock market. Uh, beginning with Newegg, today it is up 16%. So yesterday uh, definitely touched a support level. Not true support, but at least one of the support levels. So it is up uh, to 30.55 and it went, it was down significantly. You can definitely see the support. If, uh, if you just zoom out, you can see that that bounce right off this base here of 25.50. And if you zoom out even more, you'll see that a little more clearer. So it is a mini support level. However, uh, true support, as I've been saying, is closer to uh, when you zoom out in the six month, you get a better idea where that is around $6. Uh, and then when you go a year, even five years, get a better idea of where your true support is actually $3, three to six. Um, in the last six months, I do believe it, it was below 10. Yeah. So three, three to even seven would be a uh, pretty good support for you. If this hits $10, uh, you know, you could pick that up, but that I wouldn't uh, approve of that, but you could do a lot worse getting this at $10. So uh, you can see the volume right here was really incredible right there. So uh, was that 20 or on 20? but I'd say three to 10. Okay, so I'm gonna close this one, move on to uh, Sensonics before we get to the main event, which is Meta Materials. And there's a lot, or not a lot, but at least there's one big story today. And the title of this video pretty much is creating an empire. Uh, they're, they're creating a facility, a massive facility, 68,000 square feet. We're gonna look at, into that shortly. So Sensonics, I believe was, uh, I think it was down today uh, from, was 275 no actually was up 327 so there was quite a sell-off um from the peak of 327 and uh finished off at 291 uh new egg also saw a lot of volume today a significant amount uh way more than the average of its daily the daily average uh since onyx i'm waiting for this uh waiting for this chart to load. Let me just pause. So we do have, we do look at other stocks than meta materials. Uh, but in particular, if you look at the, how it opened here, you can see that it did peak right here. And then it uh, saw a large amount of selling at this peak. Um, so is this the support level? I'd say it isn't. Your support is closer to, I'm gonna say a dollar, a dollar to two dollars, one dollar to one, one to two dollars. It's actually pretty safe. Yeah, one to two dollars is your support level for Sensonics. Uh, moving on to Microvision next. And I was going to say in passing that. Even if I was not tracking meta materials, I could sense something is going on. No pun intended. I could sense <laughs> something is going on regarding uh, the shorting, that this stock is being heavily shorted and dropping significant percentages uh, every day, every week. And that is just manipulation. So uh, I can smell a short squeeze and that is what's going on in this case. Uh, for microvision, we can see here uh, the day's range, 1355 to 1434. Uh, is this the support level level we're looking for? Let me just pause it one more time. Okay. So as this chart loads, uh, we're going to look in a sequential manner. We'll look at ATOS, ATOSA Therapeutics, following this chart, and then AMC, then GameStop, and then we'll end it with Metamaterials. Uh, after which we'll look at the Finviz uh, top losers, and I should say the top loser and the top gainer, and look for any uh, buying opportunities in terms of the unusual volume that's going on there. Uh, 
a look at George Polycar's Twitter after that, and we'll just keep going on. So we can see finally loaded. Uh, okay, 1039 looks like that might be support. So you're looking at between a dollar, yeah, a dollar to as high as what's that, seven? One to seven dollars, but uh, if you want to, if you're desperate for this stock, then maybe ten. So I'll stretch it to one to ten dollars support from Microvision. And this goes pretty regularly to 20 plus. So even $10 is pretty safe. If you if you can get this at 10, sell it at 20, you'll double your portfolio. But if you can get this even lower, then why not, right? It might go down to seven even. So that's all for Microvision. Atos is next, and it is down 20%. So it has fallen significantly over the recent days and weeks. So uh, as this support, um, true support is looking like $1 to $1 to $2, maybe even three. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not buying, and then you're going to be a bag holder. So let's look a uh, dollar is pretty safe. $2 is pretty safe as well. Let's not make a mistake here. Yeah, two dollars is safe, but is a th is three dollars safe? Uh, no, it isn't, because this was stuck between just above a dollar one fifty for the longest time, especially this month. Um, so I'd say one to one a dollar to one fifty one sixty. So we're looking for a nice bounce. Here's a big bounce right here. That's resistance, but in terms of the drop, looks like two. There's a lot of volume here. Let's look at the volume going on there. 167, two dollars. So one to one. Oh, this is a doozy. I'm gonna say one to two dollars. But just to be safe, even below that, it might go to one, 180, 190. 155 right there, ouch. And then went all the way to eight. You know what? Two dollars isn't could be worse. So you know, one to two is pretty safe. So I don't know if it realistically will drop below two again. I mean it did just right here, 155. So one to two. I'll just say one to two, but uh, if you're a little cautious, maybe make that 180, 180, 190. And it does make a difference when you're buying thousands of shares. So AMC, uh, it was between 34 to 38. Volume was below the average. And uh, yeah, this is continuing on a downward trend, a downward path. Um, yeah, it did hit 32 and then bounced up a little bit. Uh, that's what Trey was talking about. It, it hit 32 at one point and then went up to 37. But I mean, that wasn't really true support. Um, this looks like support right there, 42, and then it went up to 59, but that was because that was fresh off the squeeze. Um, sounds like orange juice, but any, <laughs> uh, but if it drops down to these previous levels, five to 10, and then, you know, actually to 20, around $20, it's going to hit 30. And then, uh, in the next month, it might go down to 30 below 30. If it hits 20, I expect uh, more of a rebound from the $20 uh, price tag or price share price. <laughs> uh, $16 is pretty solid as well. You can look right here. It, it was at $19, $16. Uh, I think it might rebound from 16 to 20 uh, very strongly. It might go to 30, 40. However, uh, the other the other direction is possible where it could go to five to 10. So I don't think it's going to stay at that level for too long. If it goes to five to 10, it's going to surge really quickly. 
because that is a fire sale. People are going to jump on that. It might go right back up to 50, 60, or like, like within a few days. So, so five to six is going to drive, or I should say five to ten dollars will drive the volume to, you know, almost a billion, maybe a billion. So that's going to be an incredible frenzy. It's going to be a bloodbath. The <laughs> shorties, hedge funds are going to be crying. Uh, if it if it goes down that much, people will buy this uh, and sell their cars and everything in their homes just to get in back into this and squeeze it again, back up to 50, 60. So we'll see what happens, but it is on a downward trend. So we have to see where's the next level level of support. Will it break the support level of $30? I, I believe so. I think it will go down to 20, uh, 20 and maybe even lower than that. So we'll see. GameStop uh, finished off in the plus just a little bit there uh, was between 166 to 179 and the volume was half the average okay all right next is meta materials okay here we go this is the the darling of this channel at least <laughs> uh, so today is friday uh, most of these trending stocks, I call them the trending stocks, no longer the M word anymore, uh, to give them more respect and dignity than that. It was between 360 to 390, uh, and we are just right about at the low. So this is an amazing sale. Uh, volume was about half, just over half the average. So no one is selling, uh, or I should say the hedge funds are selling to each other. It's just being short laddered. Um, this is due for a, a squeeze up to 20 and over. Uh, it's going to take some time before the dividend will be released. Again, I believe that'll be after December 28th uh, this year because that was in the press release that, that is directly from Meta Materials. That, that is the absolute last day or latest that they need to sell or will be selling all the assets from Torchlight. Uh, so yeah, we are right at, I mean, this is support. Anything under $4 is strong support. Uh, this will rebound next week. I'm not sure how high, but it, it won't stay down in this $3 range. Uh, if it goes down to three, uh, I might just pick up some more shares <laughs> uh, at this rate. I mean, it is due for a squeeze. Uh, we can definitely see at least double digits. So $10 and then eventually 20 uh, we can see after hours, it is pretty much about the same, but this is a fire sale. So if you don't buy this now, you're going to regret it, you know, months from now uh, towards the end of the year, maybe even into August, August, September, this could really squeeze, but we'll see. This is prime for a squeeze. Uh, in my previous video, I did report uh, how uh, I think it was FINRA describing short interest as being 69%. So this is primed for a squeeze. Uh, so that's all I have to say about Meta materials, in terms of the daily action. Uh, biggest loser is BTB, Bit Brother Limited, Chinese. No surprise, forty-eight percent negative. Probably this is oh American. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's just take a look. Atos was the biggest loser in the trending stocks at uh, about twenty percent loss. And I think that's all I recognize. Yeah, Zella is another one that I recognize from Wall Street Bets. SXTC is up, biggest winner today, a Chinese drug manufacturer, 41%, most likely a pump and dump, and that's 110 million. So yeah, there's so just people pumping it, they're going to dump it soon. Moderna is up 10%, that's one I recognize. And in terms of unusual volume, that's not an opportunity, that one's, uh, I'm not sure about that, I'll take a look at that quick. That one, nope, and that one is a nope. Okay. So let's look at GLG just really quick and see, is this a potential buying opportunity? I, I don't think so, but uh, it's good to just do the research, analyze the chart here. All right, let's just move my little screen there. Look at the weekly. Let's move it that way, okay. So I'm on the left side of the screen now. It's <laughs> looking at the weekly chart. This is a 
Chinese industrial company, so I would stay away from it. Um, it's been around for a few years now, so it's not does not exactly it's not exactly a flash in the pan that just comes out of nowhere. Uh, this has been down at what number is that? A dollar below two dollars, and below a dollar. It has gone up to fifteen dollars twice, but that was in the last. Oh, how many years is this now? At least six years. So it might take six years to go up again and appears to have gone up. But it did take six years. I don't know if we want to put it in there for that long. I mean, even uh, Lucid Motors and, and uh, Metamaterials will be, you know, up to fifty hundred dollar levels by that time. They wait that long. So I wouldn't put my money, not even a cent in this one. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit more for GLG. So it was below, it was at 30 cents. So that was a steal, perhaps at 30 cents. And then uh, to sell it at uh, 375. Yeah. That's 10 times the portfolio if you really believe in this company. And they've been around for a while, so it's not exactly a flash pump and dump, but it is more of a long-term pump and dump, if I could put it that way. Uh, this went down below a dollar, 77 cents. The range, I don't know if there's a range here, but 77 cents, okay, to 402. So I don't know, I mean, there, there looks like potential here. It looks like it's on the downturn, but this might rally, uh, and it did go up. It closed at one dollar and one cent, um, and this has been down in every aspect: quarterly, monthly, six months, and twelve months. Uh, could this go back up to two dollars? I, I think it can. I, it's been touching over two dollars multiple times in this chart, so you know what? It's not a bad play, although it is a Chinese stock, so I'm automatically suspicious just by default. But uh, it's been around for quite a while. So, uh, yeah, I can see here it goes over two dollars pretty consistently. Uh, it would be it would have been good to get into the stock at thirty cents. GLG TD Holdings, and uh, once it dipped below a dollar, started to see a recovery there. A small recovery. I mean, yeah, it's been flatlining. Be honest, it has been flatlining. Uh, December, okay, so it peaked right here, saw a dip, peaked again. So where is real support? What's going on with this company? Why is it falling like this? Yeah, this looks like it's just flatlining. I don't know. That's that's pretty sad. I would probably wait if I was really serious about the stock, and I'm not. But if I was, I would say uh, I would buy it at thirty cents. Right about, right about this range, the 30 cent to uh, 50 cents range. I wouldn't, buy it. I wouldn't buy the stock over 50 cents. So if I can get this between 30 or zero, between zero to 50 cents, then yeah, I'd buy this stock and you could double your portfolio or even quadruple it. When it goes up to $2, eventually it might take a year, it might take a year, six months, but uh, that's GLG. Didn't think I'd spend some more time on that, but I did. Uh, moving on to Twitter, George Palikaris' Twitter. He did tweet something, and it is uh, significant news. Pretty important. Um, basically, Meta Materials is building an empire. We have the the uh, the uh, I don't know what you call it the map, I suppose the schematic. Yeah, that's the word. The schematic for the building that they are planning to build. Uh, this is what it looks like. Let me just open it for you right there. And I was going to make a thumbnail, but so it looks like that. It is 68,000 square feet. It's a manufacturing facility and also I believe customer training, some kind of training facility as well. So, uh, and it is being planned by Stantec, one of the largest uh, I believe building companies or the, one of the largest companies in the world in regards to uh, 
architecture, possibly. I'm not sure, but uh, the, this tweet is not showing what it what it's saying. It's taking a while to load, so let me just pause the video. So you have to. Oh, there it is. So they they are the architects and engineers at Stantec, one of the world's top three global design firms, and that's this is a sneak peek at a sixty eight thousand square feet nano fabrication and customer training center facility. So that was tweeted today. And that's pretty significant news. I mean, this is showing you that this company is for real. It's serious. They're building an empire. How big is 68,000 square feet? Well, NVIDIA has a 70, uh, 750,000 square feet building. So this is roughly 10 times the size of um, what Meta is building. And so you can just take about a 10th of this building if you divide into 10 and you can just see how large these buildings are. That is still a, a large building if you take one tenth of NVIDIA's building. So they're building an empire. Okay, um, opening up, I think that's all to say about that. I'm gonna go to uh, Wall Street Bets next and then finish off with Meta Materials. Uh, so for Fridays, I'm only going, going to do these pre-recorded sessions. I don't have the time or the luxury of time to be checking up on the uh, the chat on Fridays, but maybe other days I will do a live stream if that is uh, if that is something people want. Please comment if you want me to continue doing those. Um, so let's do a scan of these uh, these ticker symbols on Wall Street bets. We have AMC. GME, Apple, okay. It's taking a while to load. Um, I'm gonna predict Wish will be here. Uh, hopefully Meta Materials shows up too. It's been there in the past week a few times now and that's really spreading word of mouth for our, for our cause, for this, uh, this very incredible stock that is going to be the next Tesla. It's got a lot of huge potential, massive potential. I mean, every stock has massive potential, but when you look at what Metamaterials is up to, that is a very promising uh, business model and, and products that they have in, uh, in the pipeline. CRSR, I don't know if that's an actual stock, but okay, that's gotten, it's gotten a mention there. Uh, next, Clover. Yeah, Clover's almost at support levels. Uh, once it touches eight, I think that's a good buy point. But seven to eight is true support, in my opinion. Could even be six, but you know what? Six to eight is pretty safe. Workhorse, that's a good stock too. Just don't know the entry point at this moment. You have to look at that chart. And I think that's it. Okay, Clover again. I'm just gonna see if I can find a meta material one mention. Blackberry, Avi Point DD, okay, or Av Point, CLF, CRSR again, two mentions now for CRSR. Anyway, I take this all with a grain of salt, I really don't take these picks seriously unless I do my homework and then I look at the chart and say, okay, well, well, this is a good stock and this is a good entry point for this stock, whatever stock that is, SPCE. Uh, that seems to be getting a lot of mentions. Upstart, U UPST. Um, someone's a millionaire right here. They just <laughs> saw the hymns, DD. Okay, Virgin Galactic, SPCE again. And GME, okay. Sophie, that's a pretty good stock too. Just uh, have to look at the entry points there. Sundial, the weed stocks, are very bullish on those. I should say bearish, not bullish. Uh, Wish, Nokia, Ericsson, Sophie, VIX. So uh, VIX, the instability stock or indicator is going up, which is not a good sign for the market, indicating a potential stock market crash. And I think that's it. Yeah, I'm just scrolling and scrolling. Bingo, BNGO. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, Metamaterials, if it's not here by now, then it's not 
getting much attention on this form at the moment, SPY. So I'm going to move on to metamaterials and give it a pause and just open up the tabs that are relevant. Okay, we have, uh, so I've opened up all the tabs from uh, metamaterials subreddit. There's about nine in total. Uh, the first one is talking about 5G redirection, medical applications, no stick, diabetic testing, headset free, augmented reality, flexible solar energy tech. Meta is working in the future. Congrats to us for getting in early. Um, okay, looks like they updated their website. I, I haven't seen all these detailed pictures like this, for example, LIDAR protection, the ice fog, the ice defog EMI shielding. I didn't see that one before. Transparent 5G reflector, wow. That is, uh, wow. August 4th, they can start making announcements. We're in the quiet period. Okay. Um, interesting. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's an interesting thought to consider. I'm not going to just believe everything I read there, but okay, maybe, perhaps, I don't know. 5G redirection. Okay, looks like I opened this up twice, so I'm going to close that. Okay, Meta Apes, what is he saying here? Anyway, we're going to see this pattern go on, going on for quite a while. Uh, this is a long-term play. Let me put this into perspective. Hedgies have not covered. If we hold, they can't cover until the majority starts to sell. Yeah, at least 50% of the float is shorted, which means 44%. Only 44 has to hold to squeeze this. Whether you like it or not, at this point, it's sell for an insane loss or fight the hedge funds. Yeah, I don't care if you're a bear or a bull or ape, we have to work together so we can make money. We either bankrupt or squeeze at this point. There's no one between. The hedge funds are too deep in the stock. The squeeze is real with real potential. If we hold and be patient, uh, we'll be re rewarded. Yeah, definitely. That's what we have to do is just hold and keep buying at the dip. Um, the volume will drive this. And eventually, you know, when when the dividends given out in, in full and uh, they start announcing more deals and more PR with possibly Tesla and, and uh, different uh, military aerospace companies, government uh incubation kind of companies, they're going to explode. So let's be honest, I bet the same hedge funds shorting AMC and GME are, GME are probably shorting Meta as well. Let's get it out there. I went to jail in my country because I published anti-government magazine. I'm not afraid to say what is right and what is not right now. In the US, Citadel is manipulating stock the stock market, especially GameStop, every single day. Ken Griffin is a thief. He is stealing money from retail investors by manipulating the stock. I'm not afraid to be sued. These people are financial criminals. Um, so yeah, yep, most likely they are the same people or, or related to the same ones who, are, who have shorted and continue to short uh, AMC and Game, I was gonna say GameStop, but <laughs> GameStop. We have 8.3 million fail, fail, uh, failure to delivers in June 29th. Oh, that's significant. So what's going on here? As of now, after watching fails to deliver FTDs at AMC and, and hedge funds packaging fail, failure to deliveries uh, to an ETF, I think that was the XRT, and shorting this poop, I see more drops coming as the hedge funds are just investing are inventing a new de definition of pure crime and illegally manipulating the whole market. This is insane. Remember 2008 when rating agencies were paid by the banks to give packaged triple C mortgages, a triple A rating just to not give in, although everybody knew what toxic they were sitting on. This is the same procedure, only this time there's no limited amount of houses, so they can set up an unlimited amounts of ETFs that are nothing else but packaged failure to deliver. This is the biggest crime in financial history. 
uh, yeah. You know what? But they <laughs> they have to cover eventually because of the merger, the reverse stock split, and um, oops, I just closed one I shouldn't have closed. Uh, let me pause and reopen that one. So this uh, poster is saying the meta quiet period from June 28th. Is this why no news is coming? This actually makes a lot of sense uh, because the CEO's comment on not being able to disclose any further information and basically reading from a script. Uh, does this apply to a merger? Yes, it does. I've been through two public company mergers in my business role. Both had to go through a quiet period I'm personally using this time to accumulate shares. Oh, wow, this actually makes sense. I've doubled my position after the reverse split and have having my position initially after the merge, uh, sitting on amount of shares. I also eat crayon. So yeah, yeah, that's actually, that makes sense. Um, so this could be the calm before the storm. Um, So it says 40 days from the initial day of trading and 40 weeks before earnings, or I should say four weeks, not 40. If I understand correctly, when is the meta earnings? Uh, they won't disclose earnings until the end of Q3, so in around October. So things will probably change a lot by Q3, before then and after then. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see the, the stock price movement. I'm going to open that. This meta quiet period might actually be more than just a speculative rumor here. So I'm going to open up a quiet period from Investopedia and take a look at what that means. Doing our due diligence here, doing our homework or research. What is a quiet period? Prior to a company's IPO, the quiet period is, is an SEC mandated embargo on promotional publicity. This prohibits management teams or their marketing agents from making forecasts or expressing any opinions about the value of their company. Wow. So the four weeks before the close of a business quarter is also known as a quiet period. Wow. So the hedge funds are really taking advantage of this opportunity to just uh, spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt by shorting the stock making it seem like it's worthless. And then when all this news, when they're able to, uh, when they're no longer, uh, you know, with a tape on their mouth, when they're no longer muzzled, uh, this stock is gonna take off. Wow, oh man, this really is the calm before the storm. Wow. So like I was saying, by this time, uh, next year, January, uh, as late as probably April, or maybe even a year from the merger. So let's just say June, July, 2022. I hate to keep moving the goalposts, but you know, let's keep it at April 1st. But it'll be interesting to see where we are a year from the actual merger date. That's gonna be wild. I, I highly doubt it's gonna be $4. Again, I have placed a bet. I put this channel as that bet. If we are below $4, April 1st, 2022, this, this channel will cease to exist. I'm going to shut it down. I will either delete it altogether or just stop uploading videos of this sort. Might might just keep that channel, but you know, won't upload anymore. Or, you know what, I'll just delete the channel, forget it. I'll just delete it altogether. Uh, that's what I said, so I'll stick to what I said. Meta outperforming most stocks in this bearish market. Okay, uh, it is. Okay, I don't know what he's, I guess he's trolling. Speculation. Meta material speculation. Let's look at this one. Mighty King George. Okay, this is this one is saying, this is just my <clears throat> excuse me. I don't have any water. This is just my opinion. But I think King George is an absolute legend. I keep seeing fear, or I'll just say FUD, FUD posts bashing him. And remember, he is the CEO of Meta. He has to be careful what he says. I'm sure he would love nothing more than to lay out his masterful plan for all of us to see, but he can't. You know, the quiet period. You wouldn't go to a poker game and show your hand to the other players, would you? If he did, how long do you think it would take for those betting against Meta to cry foul? That could lead to investigations. And you know, the government is behind Meta. You can't uh, put that at risk. You're going to be in hot, hot water. 
for the government, especially that they're they're the ones investing in these companies such as Boeing, Airbus, and and uh, Northrop Grumman and and uh, Lockheed Martin. I can never get that one. Lockheed Martin. So they do directly fund Lockheed Martin, the Department of Defense, the U.S. federal government. So they are getting federal cash. So if they mess up uh, meta materials, they're going they're going to be angry. So they have to be very very careful. Uh, that's why we have this quiet period. Potentially, I, I think that's why that could lead to investigations. Okay, the last thing we need right now is for negative attention. That could cause the stock to plummet. Uh, we have found the bottom. I think it's only up. Yeah, I agree. I think three fifty is the bottom so far. It hasn't dipped below that. It co it could go. It could go. It could go to uh, three dollars. Not saying that's impossible, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. Patience is the key. If you can't handle the drop from seven to three, three fifty, how are you going to handle the increased volatility when the FTDs and margin calls start coming into play? Yeah, I, I know. If you can't handle this at the lows of three dollars and something, how are you going to handle it up to $10, $20? You might just sell it way below its real value. This is worth at least $20. i am not selling even at $10. So I, I think resistance, we're looking at $20, $20 $22. Uh, but the ceiling, there really is no ceiling. This could go to 40 This could go, this could go to 50 uh, This could go to 100 very quickly and very easily. All right, so last post for the day it's speculation again just some thoughts putting two and two together promise nothing to do with that tesla or elon uh, so meta is expanding its facility uh, from fifteen thousand square feet to sixty-eight thousand. so that is more than four times the size of their current facility i wonder why okay so he, he included uh, an article here uh, two articles interview here with george uh, mentions what a partnership Speculation partnerships will create increased demand, hence the need for a, a larger facility. That's yeah, that makes sense. It's because of the partnerships. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 good speculation. The size is increases 28%, not four times. Previous facility was 58,000. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay, never mind. So it's going up by 15,000 square feet. And they paid their lease with shares. So that's interesting. It's like you go to a restaurant, it's an expensive dinner, I'll pay you with shares. <laughs> okay, so we've got two more to look at now. Meta Materials assigns a amended 10-year lease agreement. Um, Expanding by 15,000, okay. They agreed to reduce the annual rent for the 10-year term by 2.8 million uh, to provide with 500,000 in cash. The landlord agreed to subscribe to, subscribe to 993,000 common shares at 340 per common share. Wow, wow. The, Okay, that's why I dipped to 350. So 340, you're looking at that could be the real support there because they wouldn't sell it below what they believe should be the lowest. So they gave him a discount there. So 350, you're looking at that's the true support then. 340, 350. I don't see it going below that. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Have a great weekend and may God bless you and God bless your investments. Apex Investor signing out.